This is what's wrong with layering your breaks like this. It's way too cluttered. Do it like this instead. It's way cleaner. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can take multiple drum breaks and layers to create brand new breaks. I'll be focusing on the liquid drum and bass genre, but this can be used for pretty much any genre. It's all about taking elements from each drum loop and creating something new. My name is Stranger, and I'm here to unlock secrets to dance music production. All right, let's get right into it. All right, to start, let's pull a few samples as the basis of our track. And today I'm gonna be grabbing my samples from Tracklib, who's today's sponsor for the video. And I found this R&B track by Jay LaMotta called Can't Refuse, which has a really nice vibe, which would be perfect for liquid drum and bass. Now, the great thing with Tracklib is a lot of their tracks have multi-tracks, meaning you can split the track into its individual stems, such as the drums, vocals, and keys. So here's the track. Super nice vibes. So I'm going to be using the lead vocal track. Stop, no. I'll also be using the keys. Very nice that they have this separated because this is a nice vibe. Also, I have a collection of all my favorite breaks on Tracklib. So if you go on Tracklib, you can find this collection and use these breaks. We're gonna grab a couple of these breaks for our liquid drums today. Here's the first break by the 45 King. I'm gonna be, the first break is by 45 King. It's got the funk soul shuffle, which is perfect for liquid drum and bass. There's also this rendition of the hot pants break, which provides a nice shaker. Also, this break by Frolin Music Library has a nice kick and snare, which will be our main hits for the break. Finally, I found this nice bongo loop, which will be a nice backbeat for our drum break. What's cool about Tracklib is you can, instead of downloading the entire track, you can select two or four bars, and then you can loop the specific section, like the section I have looped over here. You could also use this pitch uh, bender to hear how it sounds pitched up. It definitely has that drum and bass vibe. So we're going to be pulling elements from each break to construct a completely new break beat. I'm going to be showing you the process of this. For those that don't know, Tracklib is an online record store for sampling with a growing catalog of over 80,000 tracks and multi-tracks, which you can use for your own music. The great thing about Tracklib is that you know that you can clear the samples affordably and quickly. So if you're interested in trying out Tracklib, you can use my link down in the description. You'll receive 15 samples for free, which you can use in your own tracks. So I personally like to cut up my breaks in MIDI. So I use a software called Recycle, which allows you to identify the slice for each hit. And the cool thing about Recycle is there's this stretch function, which creates an artificial tail after the end of the slice. And it just makes it sound a lot more smoother when you're pitching up the break. Ableton does not have that feature. Ableton does time stretching, which is completely different from this stretch. It, this actually creates a tail after. It doesn't modify the actual slice. So it makes it sound a lot more natural without creating artifacts in the slice. So I've, in, so I've imported all four breaks into Ableton. The first two breaks I'm gonna do in audio so you can see more visually how the slices are placed. And then the other two I'm gonna be using MIDI, which is my preferred way of rearranging breaks. But I thought I'd do it in audio so you can actually have a visual idea of how things fall together. So let's start with the Frolin Music Library break, which I'm gonna use as the main kick and snare. So I just like that how the sounds hit on this. It's very nice and sharp and hard. The 
The first step is to listen to the break very carefully and choose your favorite kick and snare. Because this is a live drummer, each hit sounds different. So you want to be precise about which ones you choose for your break. That's a nice snare. That's also a nice snare. Notice how each one has a subtle difference. We could use this as the kick, so what we'll do is take the slice, put it over here. You can take the snare, I like the snare here. We'll place it over here and we'll sequence a two-step rhythm. I may just want to use the same kick over here and then we'll choose a different snare for the second snare so it sounds a little more natural. I like this one here. I'll pull it down here. Okay, so now we can listen to this loop here on its own. Now that sounded good so far. I'm gonna highlight all the slices and then shift tab so we can go into the waveform view. Now I actually don't want to warp it. So the warping creates artifacts. So earlier I was mentioning how Ableton does stretching and it creates artifacts when it's trying to fit a, a break within the given tempo. It might have to condense the time or has to stretch the, the time. Now that algorithm creates artifacts and makes the break sound unnatural. So I actually turn off the warp. Now notice what happens to each slice when I turn off the warp. Notice uh, it's gotten a bit longer because now the slices are playing their natural length. So now when you play it, it should sound a little more natural. And that actually sounds a bit better. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the clips again and we can play with the pitching. So you can pitch it up according to taste. I'm actually going to pitch it up quite high because I want that nice tight liquid vibe. However, some of the lower ranges also sounded good. So really use your ear and choose what is best for your track. Next step is I'm going to shorten and tighten up the kick and snare so it sounds tighter. So I'm going to shorten the snare like that. And then we can add a fade to make it even tighter. Same for this one. We can do the same for the kick. Now for the kick, I'm going to just stretch it all the way and then fade it out like that. I like how that sounds, so maybe shorten this as well. Maybe with the first kick, it can be a little bit more boomy, so we can make it a bit longer. Okay, that sounded good so far. Now this step is optional, but if you like, you can highlight the entire bar, hit Control or Command J, and that just consolidates that into one loop. So it might make it easier when you're arranging the track. Now, actually, I'm going to leave it unconsolidated because since we're still in the constructing stage, I may want to adjust the fades and the lengths of the hits to match the rest of the hits. So I'll leave it unconsolidated for now. Now, I just want to adjust the frequencies of the kick and snare a little bit. I'm going to remove the low end from the kick and remove some of those mids from the body to make it sound a lot more uh, tighter. And then I'll lift up some of the mid, high mids and high frequencies around 9,000 hertz just to make the break sound a little tighter. So here's before, after. Just sounds a little more high definition. Now the next step is they're going to shape the dynamics of the kick and snare. So right now I find that they sound kind of bulky, which there's nothing wrong with that. However, I'm going for a more tighter sound. So you can actually use a compressor to shape the tightness of your kick and snares. So I went into this in detail in my Amen and Breakbeat compression video. I also did uh, an entire PDF guide on all my favorite compression settings. So if you haven't grabbed that yet or seen the video, you can find it down in the links below. The Amen compression cheat sheet has been quite popular and just gives you all my favorite settings with the compressor for if you want a tight like break or you want it fat and full, all it is is compression settings. So here's the break without compression. 
And notice when I turn on the compression, notice what happens to the peaks. Notice how the kick and snare just sounds sharper. So what I'm doing is I have a pretty low threshold at around negative 21 dB. And then my ratio is at four. And the key here is the attack. So it has a bit of a slow attack. So that means that it allows the peaks of the break to play before it compresses or squashes the signal. So if my attack was very fast, then all those peaks would get squashed as well. So this is how it sounds with a fast attack. And you can see on the visualizer that it's the break is pretty squashed. All you had to pay attention to is the beginning of the kick and snares. And watch what happens if I slowly increase the attack. Then you get those peaks again. And that's what makes the kick and snare sound tight. All right, so that's pretty much for the kick and snare. Let's move on to the funk soul break. So here's our funk soul break. Now it's playing a lot faster than its normal tempo, so it does sound a bit odd. Let's pitch it up so it sounds more like drum and bass. So I'm pitching it by eight semitones, and that sounds a lot tighter. The first step is what you want to do is you want to quantize all the slices so it's right on the grid because this will help when we start chopping and rearranging the break. However, I say that with a grain of salt but because you can leave the transients uh, as is if you want a more human groove but i just like to be more precise since we're layering a bunch of breaks together i want everything to sound lined up and clean so i've aligned all the transients to the grid but you don't have to do that you can also leave it a uh, loose for that funkier vibe so with this break i'm just gonna slice up each hit control or command e we'll just create a slice but and the goal here is to rearrange this break to complement the kick and snares of this main purple break here. So essentially, I won't need a kick because I already have a main kick and snare. I don't want to conflict it with too much kick and snares layered together. So I'll remove the kicks and a snare. So now we're left with this. Now we can hear together with the kick and snare of the other break. However, like this, although this pink area is filling in the gaps of the of this break, notice wherever the pink is playing, there's no nothing playing here. So it's filling out the areas of this break. However, it doesn't sound natural because the pink uh, uh, leaves, exits, then it sounds like something drops off, right? So to make this a little more fluid, we're going to have to fill in the gaps here of the soul break. And how I like to do it is I'll replace uh, the kick and snares of hi-hat. So what I do is listen to the slices and choose your favorite hi-hat. We have three choices here. We have this hi-hat here, one, this hi-hat here, two, and this one over three. And, this, and these are here are shuffle. So we just want one, two, or three. Now I can just color them with different colors so it's a little more identifiable for you guys. So we can place this hi-hat. We can make a copy here. So we have one. And instead of repeating and putting one again, to make it natural, we can make put two here. And then we can then probably bring in number three. Okay, not bad. So let's fill in the rest. So we have three here, so we can pull in two and then one. Notice we're just filling in the eighth notes. We don't have to fill in all the 16th notes because those 16th notes are for the shuffles. Okay, let's hear it with the kick and snare. Okay, that's sounding a lot more fluid. However, I think we can do a few more steps to improve this break. So just like uh, the main break, we're gonna go into the waveform view, select all the slices and turn off the warp so we don't get those weird artifacting. 
Okay, that's sounding smoother. The next step is I want to make the hits a little more tighter. So I'm going to be shortening the lengths and adding fades. I'm going to make each length about three, uh, I think 64 notes. Okay, that's sounding tighter. Let's add the fades. And you do it by taste. You may want to leave it up here, but I just want it nice and tight. So I'm pulling it pretty close to the start. And there we have it. Okay, and finally, let's bring up an EQ. Let's get rid of that bottom end and we'll lift up the highs. Okay, and that sounded crisp. And that's sounding much more like a drum and bass break now. All right, the third break, which is the shaker or hot pants break, I've imported as MIDI. So I can show you the benefits of both methods, audio and MIDI. So with MIDI, I'm using my Stranger slicing preset, which has a number of macros to help you manipulate the uh, break with a few uh, turns of the knobs. So we can pitch it up using this pitch knob. And then uh, we can tighten it up with these this tight knot so we don't have to do the fades with MIDI. And going back in, we can resequence this. Again, we don't need the kick and snare, so we just want a shuffle. So we can rearrange the slices so we simply get a shaker or shuffle. Now you're gonna have to listen to each slice and choose appropriately. So one is out of the question because that's a kick. Three is also out, that's out, that's out. So your options are up to these guys. So to make a shaker, it's really a hi-hat followed by a either a ghost snare or a ghost hit of a hi-hat. So usually the main hits fall on the eighth note. So that would be slice two, slice five, or slice 11. Let's so use 11. And then we can use number four, and then we'll use five and six like that. So now we have a nice shuffle there. We can repeat it for the next one. If you want, we can switch it up here, use this shuffle. Instead of six, we'll use 12. We'll take that out and then we can just duplicate it like that. And now we have a nice shuffle. We'll bring up our EQ, remove all the bottom end and boost the high end. Okay, so we have a nice shuffle. And here's our resultant break. Now I'm noticing this kick to be a bit boomy, which is why I mentioned I might wanna leave the break unconsolidated so I can adjust to taste. Because now that we have all the slices layered together, we can hear all the slices in contact with one another. We can adjust so it sounds more fluid, right? And that sounds much better. Of course, the next step is that mixing of each layer to that so that each layer complements one another. It's all done by ear. Just play, play with it until the levels sound right. We might want to make the shaker a bit tighter. Finally, here's that bongle break, which I've imported as MIDI. And let's pitch this up. Then use the tight control. If you want my slicing preset, you can find it down in the links below. Which is very handy. We'll add some EQ again to remove the bottom end. And we can go into slice. There may be some slice I want to remove. Like for example, I may want to remove the extra kicks. Like number seven can be replaced by nine. So now it's just a hi-hat. Replace these as, as well. Oh, that sounded good. Let's hear it with our entire break. Sounding fresh. Now I just want to tuck that bongo down in the mix just to add a little more um, funk to the break, but I don't want it in the forefront. So let's bring the volume down. I just want it to be something very subtle in the break. So here's without. Just adds a nice touch to the break. The next step is I grouped all four layers into a drums group so I can 
process the entire break as one and this will help it sound a lot more cohesive. So generally what I like to do is to apply a glue compressor and I'm simply using it as a clipper. So if you're not an Ableton, you can use your favorite clipper. Essentially, we're not going to be using the compressor settings. All we're going to be doing is turning on the soft clip and then increasing the makeup and essentially that increases the output to the point that it's clipping the brake. Now I just added a utility before the compressor just to make the brake a little louder. It's just up by 6 dB. And then what I like to do with the compressor is I have, so since I have a compressor that's increasing the output to clip it, I then follow it with another utility, which will bring the volume back down. So we can get an apples to apples comparison when we turn it on and off. So essentially if I boost the makeup by 6 dB, then I wanna bring the output by negative 6 dB so the actual output doesn't change. So a cool way you can do this is you can group the two effects together. You can bring up the macros. You can map the makeup to macro one and then also map the gain to macro one, and then open up the mapping settings. And we can say uh, the makeup can go zero to 20, but uh, the utility should go zero to negative 20, like this, okay? So now when I increase the makeup with macro one, I'll just rename this to uh, gain. As I increase it, you notice the makeup increases, but the output decreases. So we can get a more apples to apples comparison. Now I brought a visualizer so you can see what's actually happening to the break. So this is without any clipping. Now, essentially what we're doing is we're squashing all those peaks. However, this may seem counterintuitive because earlier we were using a compressor to make the dynamics and peaks sound really sharp and now we're squashing it however i just find that when we do this step it just makes the entire break sound a little more cohesive as one whole so we'll increase the gain of the uh, uh makeup now so notice how the break sound looks a little more square and this squareness is what makes the break sound a lot more whole. So we can turn it on and off now that it's grouped together. I mean, this step is optional. You may want a more natural sound without the clipping, but it's just something I like to do to glue the entire break together. Finally, once your break is sounding good, you can export it as an audio so you can use it in later tracks. It's just nice to have all your breaks bounce in case you want to use it in the future. As I mentioned before, if you're happy with your break, you, then you can consolidate all the slices, just highlight and then command or control J and then uh, now it's one clip and it just makes it easier when you want to arrange the track, you can just duplicate or if it's not looped, just make sure it's looped and then you can just stretch it across the arrangement. All right, now that we have all the drums together, remember the vocal we pulled from Tracklip? Here's the acapella. Ask me for a hug, yeah. It's like you give me my drug, yeah. And here are the keys for that track. So playing these two together, I came up with this uh, simple bass line using a low pass re-space. The key of the song is, I believe, F sharp minor. So I'm playing this bass line. Notice that although the key of my song is an F sharp minor, the bass line doesn't have to start in F sharp. It can always also end on F sharp and that usually works as well. The bass line is just a sawtooth detune with four uh, unison mode and it's low passed. Let's hear it with the vocals. 
Check you give me my drug, yeah Well, I can't refuse to take it now All right, that's sounding fresh. All right, so now that you've heard all the parts, let's hear the track in full. Yeah, and I'm feeling these liquid vibes. Hope you guys enjoyed watching my process on creating new drum breaks from multiple layers. It's all about selecting hits from each drum loop that complement each other as opposed to competing against each other. Try combining your favorite breaks and see what you can come up with. Remember, the first part is selecting your kick and snare and then filling the gaps with shuffles. Then you can add top percussion or bongos to add more funk. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like these, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you want to support what I do, you can pick up one of my sample packs, preset packs, or Ableton templates. You can learn more down in the links below. Also, check this video up here to learn about the liquid rolling bass. Then check this video up here to learn about the infamous Dark Soldier break. All right, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you at the next video.